Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side at 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, formulations, ingredients, something you may have heard about or read about or want clarification on, or if you just want to share a success story, we love hearing those. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, recommended on the program, you can purchase them by calling the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, or you can head over to our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. We've got blog posts up, as well as news stories, and you can purchase products or sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website. If you like what we talk about here on this program, if you believe in our mission, in the Brightside mission of helping humanity access their built-in healing and regenerating systems without drugs, without doctors, without medical intervention. If you believe in that concept and you want to help other people, or if you want to participate yourself for your own life or your friends, your family member, friends or family members, please check out Longevity, Longevity's products, as well as the Longevity business. You can find out more information by calling the Brightside Ben team at 866-735-2470 or heading over to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com and pharmacistben.com. If you're, uh, if you're interested in checking out our Truth Skin Health products, you can go to truthtreatments.com. Make sure you look at our Retinol 5% Gel as well as our Truth Serum, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and Truth Balm, all made with 100% active and functional ingredients. Why should you have to pay for water and filler and wax? I hear people say sometimes, oh, the Truth products are $200 for a bottle of Truth Serum. Well, yeah. But it's 100% active and functional. When you spend $30 on another product, you're spending it for less than, less, check this out. If 90% of your regular product is water, that means 10% of it is wax and oil and filler and maybe a, a, a 1%, if you're lucky, 2% maybe is an active ingredient. So yeah, you're going to pay more money on the upside for Truth Serum or Truth Balm or Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream or Retinol Gel, but it's going to last you six months and you're going to get real effects on your skin and you're not going to have to interface with preservatives or fragrances or waxes or emulsifiers or oil or silicon or anything your skin doesn't need or doesn't want. TruthTreatments.com, TruthTreatments.com. Okay, so we've been spending a lot of time talking about the ketogenic diet and steroid hormones, steroid chemistry fatty vitamins, the fatty system in the body. Basically, this all has to do with calming the body down. If I had to tell you one single thing to do to increase your longevity, to restore yourself back to health, if you're dealing with some kind of health challenge, it would be this, calm the body down. This is what the ketogenic diet's about, calming the body down. This is what calorie restriction is about, calming the body down. We talk about caloric restriction all the time on this program. Overeating 
eating for dopamine, eating for serotonin, eating for brain hormones rather than for nutrition, eating to correct our brain chemistry is a major, no, it is the major cause of disease. This is so important because it puts the healing process back where it belongs. It puts health back where it belongs in our laps. For too long, we have abdicated responsibility for our health and been encouraged to abdicate responsibility for our health to the medical model. They'll fix us. They'll take care of us. Well, the fact of the matter is we don't need them. Well, the fact of the matter is they don't do us any good. Witness the incredible epidemic, the, 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 the horrifying statistics of biblical proportions about the health of the human species, specifically the American human species. Caloric restriction is one of the all-time great health strategies because it calms the body down. Most of us are eating because we're trying to manage our brain chemistry. Most of us are eating or overeating, ingesting calories, not necessarily for raw materials, but to upregulate pleasure and stress management chemistry in the brain. And this puts us on an endless and non-stop search for food. And I know because I have it too. It's part of the human condition because it's how we're hardwiring. That's why we eat after we're hungry after we eat a meal. That's why you eat, you're completely full, but you still have room for dessert because we're not eating for our bellies. We're not eating for our bodies. We're eating for dopamine and serotonin. And all of this is modified, unfortunately, in our culture, primarily by sugar and unfortunately by artificial chemicals called excitotoxins. This is disease, folks. This is the, with a capital T, major cause of degenerative health crisis, our degenerative health crisis and degenerative and chronic long-term diseases defined as diseases that don't get better, that get worse, which is most of the things we suffer from. 80% of our chronic, of our health challenges, chronic long-term progressive disease. And in large parts, it's, it's caused by eating behavior. And we're encouraged to eat this way because there's lots of profit in it. There's lots of profit in having us addicted to food, of course. Snack foods, bars, and, and, and uh, in-between meals. And when they tell us to graze all day, well, that's just a, a license to keep eating. This is eating addiction, folks. And it's the reason for our epidemic of obesity, diabetes, in general, our epic degenerative health crisis. When we eat for brain chemistry, we eat nonstop. When we eat ra for brain hormones rather than for bodily nourishment and raw materials, we end up eating way more calories than our bodies can handle. And calories represent work. We eat way more calories than our bodies need. We don't need a lot of calories from a physical, physiologic perspective. This is one of the, one of the greatest ironies of our uh, empire of food is we don't need a lot of food. We don't need a lot of calories. If you could separate the pleasure that we get from eating, if we could separate the, the stress management aspect of eating from actual eating, we wouldn't be eating very much. We'd be eating very little because it takes a lot of energy to eat. We don't need a lot of calories from a physiologic perspective, maybe from a mental perspective, from a pleasure perspective from a stress management or coping perspective, when we have disturbances in the body, the body readjusts those disturbances. The body returns itself back to stability by adjusting brain chemistry. So when we have disturbances, we will eat. I don't say it's stress so much, but disturbances. Disturbances are a type of stress. When the body's disturbed in some way, and by the way, it could be joyful disturbances. It doesn't have to be uh, uh, something that's life-threatening. Many people eat when they have a joyful disturbance. Food represents a way for the body to stabilize its brain chemistry. So when there's some kind of disturbance going on, that's, this is one of the reasons why people eat when they're, uh, when they're driving. Because driving is a major disturbance for the brain. Driving requires a lot of stress management for the brain. So when we eat, when we're driving, we feel compelled to eat. And of course, fast food, fast food purveyors take advantage of this. And this is why we all eat in our cars. This is why we eat when we watch TV. This is why we eat when we're in meetings, because these represent stresses on the brain. And food is one of the ways that these brain stresses can be, uh, can be stabilized. Calories represent work. They represent heat. And that's a problem. And that's why caloric restriction is an ultimate health strategy. And it has something to do with the ketogenic diet, too. Hang on. I'll tell you what I mean when we come back from our break. 
I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll take a break and come back with more good health information right after this. Don't go away. All right, we're back on The Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls here in our next segment, so hang tight if you're on hold. If you're interested in checking out our Truth Skin Health products, especially our Truth Retinol Gel, Truth Retinol 5% Gel, made with vitamin C and retinol, and our Truth Transdermal Matrix, Transdermal Delivery Matrix, and that's it. No preservative, no fragrance, no filler, no wax, no oil. If you're interested in checking it out, head over to truthtreatments.com. i got a a blog, a skin skin health blog up at truthtreatments.com. Also, if you check out my Facebook page, The Truth with Ben, You can get some uh, Facebook posts as well, skin health posts that we do. And, of course, if you're interested in joining the Longevity team, if you're interested in joining the Brightside Ben team, call the phone team at 866-735-2470 or head over to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can sign up right from the website. Of course, you can also buy any of the Longevity products you hear advertised on the program, including the Beyond Tangy Tangerine and Healthy Start Pack and the new Ultimate Niacin and Ultimate Keto products, all off the website. Speaking of keto, we're talking about the ketogenic diet. The ketogenic diet is a relatively high-fat diet and relatively moderate protein diet and, and, and low-carb diet. And I say relatively, I think that's really important because when we talk about high fat and the ketogenic diet, what we really mean is not a lot of fat necessarily, but mostly fat. And that's a very important distinction because you see, if you combine the fact that we're all ingesting way too many calories with this high fat ketogenic diet way of eating, what ends up happening is we eat too much fat. The ketogenic diet means most of our calories should come from fat, but it doesn't mean we got a lot of fat because we shouldn't be eating a lot of calories. So in an absolute sense, we're not getting a lot of fat when we do the ketogenic diet. And this is very important because one of the major knocks on the ketogenic diet is it's too much fat. And if you figure it that most people are getting 2,500 calories a day, or I shouldn't say it, most people are getting like 4,000 calories a day, but even you know the average person is getting, say, 2,500 or so calories a day, that's a lot of fat. That could put a burden on the liver. That could put a burden on the... On the, uh, on the lymphatic system. That could put a burden on the intestine for that matter. So when we talk about ketogenic diet, it's very important to recognize that the ketogenic diet works with caloric restriction. They go hand in hand. Both of them have an effect of calming the body down. The ketogenic diet is not a license to eat a whole bunch of fat. It's a license to get most of your calories from fat, but if you're not getting a lot of calories, that's not a problem. You know... If the average American gets 2,500 calories a day, and many people get 4,000 to 5,000 calories a day, and we really need about maybe 1,000 or maybe 1,500 max for most people, not if you're working out or you're 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 an athlete or you've got some intense caloric needs, but for most people, 1,500 calories is plenty a day. And then you talk about 60 or 70% of your calories coming from fat. That's not a whole bunch of fat. But if you're doing 5,000 calories a day and 70% or 60% is coming from fat, that could put a major stress on the body. So the ketogenic diet works with caloric restriction. And that's how you keep your fat under control. By maintaining this low-calorie perspective, eating less food, the net effect is not going to be a lot of fat in an absolute sense, just in a relative sense, just compared to the amount of carbs that we're getting. And this is a mistake that many people make when they go, try to go ketogenic. They try to get most of their calories from fat. That's not necessarily a bad thing. But because there's so many calories, that means a lot of fat. And that puts a burden on the body. And in a way, that, that negates the benefits that you're going to get from, caloric restri- from the ketogenic diet because now you're hyping the body up rather than calming it down. And that's what this whole thing is about, calming the body down. This is the most powerful health strategy, calming the body down. Down. This is why nutrition works, because nutrition calms the body down. This is why fasting works. It calms the body down. Caloric restriction, ketogenic diet, calm the body down. Breathing, calm the body down. See where we're going here. Restricting sugars, calm the body down. Put the body back into a state of ease from dis-ease. It's right there in the word, folks. Dis-ease, a lack of ease. All disease, all illness can be thought of as a result of some kind of dysregulation of energy. The energy is not flowing as it should. And the reason why this is so important, check this out. 
the reason why this is so important to understand because it liberates us from the medical model. When we understand that all illness is a dysregulation of energy, that it involves dis-ease, and, and health and wellness revol- involve putting the body back at ease, we will have restored the health of the body to its rightful home, to its rightful residence, which is with us. We have accepted this medical model that tells us that the health of the body is in the realm of the outside authorities, the great kings of medicine, the great gurus, the great geniuses of medicine. We have accepted this medical model. Health has become a power trip for a, 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 the priestly class that we call doctors. Health has become a power trip for doctors who would become the lords and saviors, uh, become our lords and saviors of health, the lords of health. And it's been sneaky. It's, it's deceitful. It doesn't get us better. The medical model doesn't get anybody better ever. It hides symptoms and plays around with risk factors. Yesterday, a friend of mine, I was talking to a buddy of mine. He's a younger guy he's in his 20s. And he says, he want to know why I don't get checkups. I told him I don't go to doctors. I don't get checkups. Because what a checkup is, is they're checking you for risks. This is what they check you for is risks. Medical checkups are about risk management. They're not about health. They come up with a bunch of risk factors via statistics, and then they check you for, uh, and then they check you for those risk factors: blood pressure, chemicals in the blood, maybe the, the the function of various organs, the kidneys or the heart. But this information is not necessarily relevant when it comes to how healthy we are. It's a type of misdirection that deceives us into thinking that our cholesterol score and our bone mineral density and our thyroid hormone levels are measures of our of our heart health or our bone health or our thyroid health. But what we're not being told is that health can't be measured with scores. Health can't be measured in any period. You can't quantify health. The capitalist medical model that's supported by the government, Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden and Obamacare, as well as Dr. Oz and the whole culture of medicine, it needs quantification. It needs numbers. It needs scores. So they could tell you, oh, well, we lowered your score. Oh, well, we reduced your risk by half percent, by one percent. But real health is not about risk management. Real health is, this is how the World Health Organization defines real health, by the way, a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being. That's health. And it's holistic, whole. The body's whole. It's healthy when it's whole. How ironic, interestingly, that fear is about separation. Fear is about the unknown. Fear is about something outside of us. There's a very interesting relationship between fear and sickness, between fear and dis-ease. Dis-ease is the body out of ease. It's the body in fear. Health is about wholeness. And by the way, the opposite of fear is love. Love, health, holiness, wholeness versus fear, dis-ease, sickness, separation. So you can't quantify health. You don't determine health with a score. And once we understand that you can't determine health with a score, there's going to be a lot of unemployed scorekeepers, i.e. doctors. There'll be a lot of doctors looking for real work and an honest living. Once we figure out that you don't keep score for health, health is not about keeping score and it can't be measured by medical metrics. And no one gets better by being treated by a doctor. All a doctor can do in the day-to-day chronic disease sense is control our test markers. And guess what? It's done with drugs. Oh, my God. And I'm a pharmacist here telling you this, folks. How in God's name did drugs ever become a model for healing the body? This is one of the, mo- uh, one of the greatest scams and delusions in the history of mankind. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll take a break and come back with your phone calls right after this. Don't go away. Okay, we are back on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Hang tight. We'll get your calls here in just a moment from the journal Trends in Cognitive Sciences. I love this article. This is about expectations, the power of expectations. It's called the placebo effect. According to Dr. Katharina Schwartz, the placebo effect works quite well when it comes to treating pain and depression. There was a really cool book that came out a couple of years ago called The Emperor's New Drugs. And it was a study done on a bunch of studies, all the antidepressant studies that were out, or a bunch of the antidepressant studies that were out, were examined by a guy named Erwin Kirsch, and what he found out was that antidepressants are basically placebos. Well, that's not necessarily a bad thing, 
Because what it means is, is we have power over our bodies. This is so cool. The placebo effect is something that shouldn't be filtered. The placebo effect is something that should be examined. Drug companies try to do all kinds of things when they're testing drugs to eliminate the placebo effect. They don't want the placebo effect. They want to know if their drugs are doing anything. So they filter out the placebo effect. They do something called a double blind study which is supposed to take care of the placebo effect. But I'm saying, why aren't we figuring out what the heck's going on with the placebo effect? The placebo effect basically says that if you believe a pill's going to work, it works. Now, what does that tell you? That is such powerful, powerful information. It's a dirty little secret that drug companies don't want you to know. Your brain works as well as a drug. Oh, except for one thing. Your brain doesn't have side effects or toxicity. You can control your body with your brain to such a, a large measure that drug companies have to eliminate this, this, this effect, the placebo effect, to see if their drugs are working or not. All, uh, all at the same time, at the same time that we have this placebo effect, at the same time that we have all of this evidence that shows that the brain controls the body, that we, our mental nature is primal, at the same time, we've got a drug and medical epidemic, a medical model epidemic that is the third leading cause of death. What does this say about us, folks? Well, I'll tell you what it says. It says that we have bought, for the most part, present company excluded, because you're listening to this program. If you're listening to this program, I'm not necessarily talking about you guys. But for the most part, we've drank the Kool-Aid. I talked to a guy this week. He was on the radio. He, he was a caller a couple of, maybe a couple months ago. He had a condition called Dupuytren's contracture or Dupuytren's disease, which is where your, your hand shrivels up, basically, because the connective tissue is so inflamed, it pulls the muscles together, and you end up with this claw-like hand. So I told him on the air, I said, look, if you do everything I'm going to tell you, your Dupuytren's contracture will completely go away. And guess what? I talked to him this week. Well, first I talked to him a couple days after we put him on a protocol. And sure enough, he was feeling better almost right away. I talked to him last week, Tom from Illinois. It's gone. And he feels a lot better. Now he wants to know what else he can do. I got another really cool text yesterday. Uh, hang on. I'll get your phone calls here in just a sec. I just want to read this text. This is so amazing, you guys. This is a guy named Steve in, uh, in North Dakota. And he had cancer, okay? Or Scott from North Dakota. I don't know if he's listening. He had stage four terminal colon cancer, all right? This was uh, back in August. So I just told him, you know, like I tell everybody, the same thing. Calm the body down. Caloric restriction. Make sure you're using the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients. He texted me yesterday. Hi, hey, Ben. I'm reading you right off my phone. Hey, Ben, I'm not sure you remember me. I'm Scott from North Dakota. I was the one who had stage four colon cancer, and I was told it was terminal. I completely changed my life, started on longevity, and went organic. Well, it turned out different. I was just declared cancer-free again, and I've never felt better. I just want to say thank you. You really helped me survive and change my life. Well, that wasn't me. It was just the stuff we talk about here. I can't take credit for any of this, guys. I'm just telling you how it works. The body's doing the work. The divine force is doing the work here. But the bottom line is, is if you're dealing with a health challenge, if you're dealing with something that's causing you health misery, please Please understand it is in the body's nature to reverse. Not cure necessarily. Cure is magic. Cure is when you transform something into something else. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about reversal. Reversal is science. Cure is magic. This isn't magic. It's logic. It's science. Disease is a verb. It can be reversed. All right, we'll continue this discussion tomorrow. Talk about the ketogenic diet as well. And then uh, start talking some more about all the good, powerful, fertility, youth, health, feel-good hormones, the steroid hormones particularly. I want to start talking about D-H-E-A. Love that stuff. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Lou in New York. What's going on? Welcome to the Bright Side, Lou. Yes, um, the trouble is that my husband has um, been struggling with the um, stage 4 lymphoma, mm. and he's done the transplants, he has done... The cell transplant, he's done the chemo, and the last thing he's done now is the um, radiation, and he's still in pain. And I'm wondering, I've called other lines, and they said there's nothing they can do for this. Well, I there's a lot you can do, but that doesn't necessarily yeah. mean it's stage four and it's in the lymphatic system that it's going to, you, you may not, I don't know how much time you got. So you got to start doing stuff right away. I don't know yeah. if you listened to our program today or in the past, calm the body down. The lymphatic system is part of the blood. It's part of the circulatory system. So when you have a lymphatic cancer, it runs from head to toe. 
So you're not going to target it specifically, but what you can do is you can keep toxicity from getting into the blood and into the lymph, number one, and you can calm the body down so it can do its healing work. The lymphatic system is connected to the digestive system. It's part of the, it's one of the ways that the body processes fats as well as nutrients, as well as toxins. So keeping toxins out of the digestive system is the first thing to do. And then keeping the, your intake of fatty foods and foods in general is also going to be helpful. I'd be doing intermittent, I'd be fasting for one. I'd be eating as little food as possible, although you do need nutrition, specifically protein and vitamins. Do, uh, have them doing bone soup chicken soup. He should be subsisting on bone soup, which is uh, where you take uh, a whole chicken and turn it into soup. I call it bone soup, but it's really homemade chicken soup. Make sure the cartilage dissolves. All the cartilage is wonderfully anti-cancer. And make sure he's subsisting on that. Not only will he get the anti-cancer substances from the cartilage, but he'll also get wonderful protein, easy to digest protein. Make sure it's a clean chicken, though. No hormones, no antibiotics, organic. And he should be living on that. Okay? And only as he absolutely needs to. He probably doesn't feel like eating, but nonetheless, uh, calories represent work that the body needs to uh, represent uh, an expenditure of resources that the body needs to, to heal. So uh, chicken soup, homemade chicken soup, and vegetable juices, lots of veggie juices, homemade uh, or uh, Vitamix type vegetable juices where you keep the fiber. Make sure he's using the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients. I would be doing intravenous nutrition, Lou, if I were you or if I was your husband. Intravenous, where you go to a naturopath and have him injecting things right into your blood, vitamin C, intravenous selenium, intravenous glutathione, I'll spell that for you, G-L-U-T-A-T-H-I-O-N-E, glutathione, intravenous. You might also want to try intravenous chelating agents uh, like uh, something called EDTA. A naturopath can help you with all of that. But intravenous is important because you want to get the stuff right in the circulatory system. You want to bypass the digestive system. Uh, Hyperbaric oxygen chambers where they drive oxygen right into your lungs uh, most hospitals will have a hyperbaric oxygen chamber. That can work as well. i got to take a break, Lou, but if you hang tight, I'll give you a couple more ideas because a couple more things you could do. Uh, but basically what you want to do is you want to activate the body's parasympathetic or, or a relaxing nervous system, and you do that with good nutrition. You do that with oxygen, and you also do that by making sure that the body is not expending a lot of energy processing food toxins and processing calories in general. But i got a couple more ideas for you, so don't go away. And then uh, we'll get to you. If you're on hold, we'll get to you as well. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. side talking to Dr. James Ehrlich about bergamot and about some of the benefits of bergamot. Before we get into talking about how you use this stuff specifically, Doc, what are exactly are polyphenols? Well, you probably know more about it than I do, personally, but uh, polyphenols have a certain chemical structure. That, uh, they're substances that are found in, in grapes and olive oil and certain uh, nuts and berries. Um, and they have what's called a, a phenolic structure. But importantly, uh, they've been uh, uh, shown to have a whole host of beneficial effects on metabolism, on inflammation, and, uh, and now in cholesterol areas. So, um, uh, you know, we're seeing benefits of obviously certain types of teas that are very heavily concentrated in polyphenols and hmm. grape seed and, green tea? And, and olive oil. So we see, we see it in various things. The stuff in green tea, the uh, epigallocatechin uh, polyphenol, is that a polyphenol? Right. That would be nice. a polyphenol. That's right. Okay. So polyphenols in general are found in nature. Uh, flavonoids, those are polyphenols, bioflavonoids, et cetera, what they call bioflavonoids. Yes. Okay, and they have multiple health benefits. So specifically, in addition to fruits and vegetables, and this is one of the reasons why you want to be eating produce, and especially vegetables, you can use the bergamot, the bergamot uh, albedo, as you called it, albedo extract, as a supplement. That's now, right. This, and so this group of scientists concentrated to a very high level those particular polyphenols that um, 
been shown to lower cholesterol, lower blood sugar, improve vessel health, uh, which is very important. We, we measure... Did you say mental? Did you say mental? function. What's that? You said, you said vessel health? Blood vessel health? Yeah, the arterial, okay. arch, artery health, right. So for people who have endothelial problems, aneurysms, that kind of thing? Well, uh, I'm talking about just your regular health uh, of the vessels. The lining of, of your vessels control how risk factors cause uh, plaque formation. The lining, called the endothelium, is, uh, has the surface area of six tennis courts in the average male. Wow. Uh, 150, 175 pound male. So we're talking about this huge surface area that really governs how everything from toxins and cigarette smoking to high cholesterol and high blood pressure interact and cause disease in the vessel. And if you can improve the endothelial health, uh, and it is improved in various um, health foods and other things, but if you can show improvement, um, that's a key to a benefit. So the message is that even if you don't have high cholesterol or high blood pressure or high blood sugar or fatty liver disease, uh, this Bergamot product uh, can be a great benefit for anybody, I would suggest, over the age of 45, just to improve vessel health. And that itself is, is a reason enough to consider making an investment in your health with this uh, all-natural um, extract from this bergamot fruit. Well, it's all about circulation, right? So generally speaking, you could say that the bergamot, the bergamax, and the bergamot extract are pro-circulation. They improve the flow of blood through the... Through exactly. The- they're antioxidants. And they're anti-inflammatory, and they, uh, by various mechanisms, including those uh, mechanisms, they improve circulatory health or vessel health. Mm-hmm. Uh, exactly right. Yes. So I'm I'm guessing there probably be benefits for dementias as well and movement disorders, brain health well, issues. We are correct? looking at that now. Um, we haven't proven uh, benefits for uh, you know neurologic benefits. Uh, we have shown. For example, substantial improvements in many areas uh, from skin health, so photo aging. They have a publication on inhibition of uh, skin aging, which is very important. Uh, that's nice. part of the process that leads to skin cancer as well as just wrinkling and all these things. To improvements in, in erectile function, our latest work shows very, very significant improvements in diabetics with erectile dysfunction, and, it sh- and, and that's because of the improvement in endothelial function or, you know, vessel health. Um, and that would be important for anybody who's middle-aged who's suffering from that condition, not only diabetic. So um, it really, uh, when you affect the fundamental processes uh, of anti, uh, free radical generation and inflammation, And those processes that govern vessel health, it's not surprising to have many systems that can benefit from one product. Well, it's all about the circulation. If something's going to improve blood flow, then you're entering in the realm of a panacea, no? I mean, everything's circulation. Well, yeah. I mean, it's... it's, uh, uh, What would not be benefit? What what wouldn't benefit? What would not benefit? I mean, everything benefits from the circulation. Everybody would benefit. uh, But uh, when I... When I think about the most benefit and where the benefit would be for people uh, who don't have other alternatives, I would say metabolic syndrome, which is the, um, you know, having risk factors like an expanding waistline and high blood pressure and high cholesterol and um, high blood glucose, that's the metabolic syndrome, this insulin resistant state. Uh, Certainly fatty liver disease because there's no other options for people. Um, and um, so, and high cholesterol, and very importantly, um, since we've been able to show equivalent lowering of cholesterol and better improvements of HDL, the good cholesterol, and better lowering of LDL, uh, excuse me, triglycerides than any statin, uh, for those people, and I think there are many of them, uh, uh, many of your audience would be concerned about taking a drug. Statins sure. to lower cholesterol. Well, we've uh, shown that the LDL lowering is equivalent 
It doesn't deplete coenzyme Q, and there's no no side effects. Uh, Have you heard of- and importantly, statins tend to raise blood sugar, as you know, and yep. some people get frank diabetes. This lowers uh, blood sugar by an average of 23%. So um, wow. I have to say uh, you can make a very strong case for using this instead of a statin. But if you need to be on a statin, and there are some people who um, have heart, had heart attacks that should be on statins, we've shown that you can lower the dose of statins, which will lower side effects by adding the, the this Bergamax um, product. So... so um, I would, you know, in that case, I would, I would speak to your physician, but I think your physician will be amazed that they do the advanced laboratory work, cholesterol fractionation, and various cholesterol tests. They'll be amazed at the improvements that they will see with a lower dose of statin with uh, with this uh, product added to it. Have you heard about the cholesterol vaccine, by the way, the LDL vaccine? Yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, a colleague of mine is working on that. Um, and so um, this is an exciting area. So let's cut to the chase. We only have about a minute or two. What can somebody expect, and how soon can they expect it once they purchase the Bergamax off brightsidehealthproducts.com and start using it? How much should they take, and what, can they, what kind of results can they expect, and how soon? Well, they should take it twice a day uh, in the uh, 650 milligrams that you have on your um, website. It's a 38% concentration, a very, very high concentration that you, that you have uh, for your audience, uh, they should expect uh, improvements in, in triglycerides within a couple of weeks. On the other hand, we really like people to give it at least a three-month trial uh, before measuring uh, cholesterol and blood sugar and those kind of things, because in some people, it takes a little bit longer. But remember, we're talking about a lifetime of benefits and illnesses like heart disease that take a long time uh, mm. to develop. Um, and um, so uh, we, we urge people not to, um, you know, try something for a few weeks and, and, uh, and, and see how they're doing. But really, three months, I would say, is the time period that you'll see substantial improvements and a lot of people are losing weight with this. So, you know, wow. the people are losing, especially belly fat, which is uh, always, and the dangerous type of belly fat. We call this uh, visceral abdominal fat. Oh, yeah. I want to We've talk shown about that this is improved. I want to talk about visceral fat. And I want to talk about blood sugar. We're out of time. Can we get you on here in a couple of weeks, maybe? And we'll, well talk about it. my pleasure, yeah. Oh, good it, deal. It, All right. It'd be great Thanks. to talk to you again, Ben. Dr. Earl, thank you so, so much. One of the good guys, Dr. Earl, one of the good docs. I appreciate you coming on, and we'll get you on here in a couple weeks, Doc. Thanks so much, buddy. Thank you so much. All right, that was Dr.